What up, gang? This Ken Zerk, Ken Zilling, Ezekiel Milligan, the villain from the Trilligan, and we are back on Tsukihime. Last episode, I recorded a little earlier today. No, like literally like an hour ago. Last episode, bro was like, I'm gonna kill somebody. And then he went outside and he was about to kill somebody. And then he was like, dang, I don't really fuck with killing people. So he went back home and went to bed. Y'all fuck with my little synopsis. I don't even think I used that word right. What it matter? Let's get into this shit. 11th day, October 31st, Sunday. Mirage. Damn! All right. First thing we see, cracks. It becomes morning and I finally managed to lock the door. <sighs> my beast-like panting fills the room. My head hurts. It seems I dropped my glasses somewhere. Seeing the lines all over my room, I feel nauseous. <sighs> I feel so sick. I cut all of them I see. I feel just a little better. Only during the instant I cut things apart does my heart feel at ease. But the more I cut, the thirstier I get. <sighs> I know what I'm thirsty for. I'm thirsty for everything. Everything I see is pissing me off. They look miserable. I can't forgive that they are living meaninglessly even though they have death built into them. Why don't they die? They all have an end, they can't escape. So why do they still exist like that? They fiddle in anyway. Where's the meaning in existence? Everything I see is ghastly. But if I close my eyes, all I can remember is the sensation of killing. The sensation of a hard, unbloodied blade softly uniting with pulsing flesh. There can't be a greater stimulation for a human than that. A terrible sensation that almost makes me want to bite my tongue off. It doesn't matter if it's a positive or a negative feeling. Especially in my case. Because my first was the best beyond all belief. It's hopeless. Arakide. The pleasure I got from severing her body into 17 pieces still burns in my brain and won't go away. Those beautiful body parts. The appearance of a human, but with a tenacious life that surpasses far beyond that of people. The enjoyment I had from, ki from the killing has faded. That time, I didn't kill Arukai, but I must have killed my brain instead. <sighs> I want to destroy everything, kill everything. I know that's wrong, but I don't think I can hold it in. My body is filled with excitement. I'm about to go insane. Shiki, are you awake? I can hear Hisui's voice from the other side of the door. Shiki, it's not good if you keep the door locked. You are awake, please open the door. Open. Open the door. Open the door and let Hisui inside? You gotta be kidding me. If that happened, I don't know what I would do. Like this, if I stay alone like this, lying in bed with the curtains shut, they're open. I can stave off the desires that threaten to overtake my mind. That's why if Hisui comes in here, I'll... SHUT UP! LEAVE ME ALONE! I scream at the door. Shiki, are you not feeling well? I said leave me alone! I'm fine, so just leave me alone! If she came in this room, something I couldn't take back would happen. After a deep silence, I hear footsteps. Quietly, she walks away from the door. <sighs> now it's safe. Thinking that, I calm down just a little. I should, I should just read a book to unwind. Huh? The book that was always beside my pillow wasn't there. The book written in English, I definitely can't read it, but it was a way to kill time. I search, but I can't find it. I can't find it. I frantically try to remember what the cover looked like, but I can't. The book, the book. Come to think of it, why did I even put that book by my pillow? I don't know. I don't even remember bringing it here. I don't know where I brought it from. In the first place, did that book even exist? Really, you may not, you may have not realized it. I remember Roa's irksome voice. That book, those contents. The book I read when I couldn't sleep. Is it maybe just a dream of mine? Reading that I was awake and couldn't sleep? But you were already insane a long, long time ago. Roa said such words. Dream, dream. But I don't see those kinds of dreams. 
in the first place. I don't have that strange knowledge inside of me. There's no reason for me to have that dream. That, that isn't a dream. You may have not realized it. Shut up! <sighs> then what is that? Since when the hell did I start having dreams that belong to another person? You and I are connected, Shiki. Shut up, you're dead! You're already dead, you bastard! So stop your incessant calling out! I'm different from you. I'm not a killer. I'm, I'm just confused by all the after effects. Since S.H.I.E.L.D. came back, I wouldn't allow myself to go mad over something like this. Yeah, I also thought so at first. Even if this Roa came in, I told you to shut up! <sighs> I breathe heavily. The sunlight pisses me off. My throat. My throat is so dry I'm about to go insane. Shiki! What are you doing, Shiki? I hear Yisui's voice across the door. I can't even answer. Words. I can't even remember my words. What fills my head? What fills my head? It's just lust. I want to violate, violate any female. I start to lust crazily. Ah! My head. I bang my head against the wall over and over as if trying to split it. But still, the thought of me slicing apart Hishui doesn't disappear from my brain. Bam. Bam. I hit my head on the wall. As if she was trying to compete with it, Hishui knocks harder on the door. <sighs> I see. This impulse. This impulse that drives me insane while leaving me conscious. This is... This is Roa. But why? I was always sane. Until I came back to the mansion, I really was normal. I hear heavy knocking on the door, but I can't open it. If I open it, it will be completely over. Ah, uh, I finally understand. That dream was the memory of Roa one generation before mine. Locked up in a room, killing both her parents, ruling over her town as a vampire. The final memories of someone I don't know. There's no way out. This is not a problem that can be solved by killing myself. There's nothing that can be helped. I understand that previous person's feelings. Even if I die, the only thing to die will be my will. Then the will of Ro will take over my body completely. If that happened, things would get much worse. <laughs> In the first place, I don't have the slightest intention of killing myself. Shiki, please, open the door, Shiki. I hear a voice from behind the door. It almost sounds like it was in another language. So far away, just one. It's just one sheet of wood between us. But it seems as far away as the moon and the stars. It's now 10 in the morning. Hisui gave up and went back. Akihana and Kohaku came and took turns knocking, but I ignored them. 12 o'clock. I'm hungry. But I'm still fine. I pull the sheets over me and hug my shaking body. 2 o'clock. I'm dying of thirst, dying of thirst, dying of thirst. I'm sorry, I've lost all sense of time. It feels very calm, but as if I was taking stimulants, my body wants to rage around. Four o'clock, more knocking, a name being called out. Whose voice is that? Whose names are those? Whose name are they calling? I can't tell. Five o'clock, it slowly starts to get dark. Six o'clock, seven o'clock, eight o'clock. Someone comes by. Shiki, I brought you dinner. You haven't had anything since this morning, so you'll collapse, you know? Kohaku's voice. She knocks on the door. Jeez, if that's how it is, I'll get you to at least eat. A rattling sound. Not knocking, but the sound of a lock opening. Woohoo, it's time to use my secret weapon, the master key. Don't do this. Don't do this bullshit. They trying to fuck me, bro. I mean, fuck with me, bro. Ah, the lock unlocks. If we don't have her leave the food, this hunger could drive him even crazier and make him like go out and do some shit. But if we don't let turn Kohaku away, he might just kill her. But now that I'm thinking about it, like, imagine if he's yelling at Kohaku to go away and she comes in anyways. 
that could anger him even more and make him kill her. So like, unless he physically forces her out or like physically keeps the door shut himself, like no matter which way this goes, Kohaku might just die either way. But I think number one has the best chance of her surviving because he might just hold the door shut. So no, I have to turn Kohaku away. The door opens, fuck! It's too late. Even if I send her away, she's already come inside. But still, I can't do the action called eating food. It'll get me too excited. It'll smash the remaining tunnel shaky within me to pieces. <sighs> I breathe hard, somehow. I have to resist it. Shiki, I'm coming in. What, what happened? Still smiling, she looks in surprise at the room lying in shambles. Her cute face devoid of fear. Her completely unguarded, defenseless figure. Her red hair and her delicious looking skin. Shiki, this is strange. How did all this happen? Still smiling, she draws closer to where I lie curled on the bed. Hurry, no, hurry, no, hurry, stop it, hurry, shut up, hurry, I don't want to, hurry, I run away, using the very last vestiges of my will, I managed to let those words out, huh, I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you, could you please say it again, Shiki, but it's working against me. Concerned, she draws closer to my bed. To my, to my body, body, her, her form draws closer, invites me in. Her white fingers touch my shoulder slightly. Her fingers pulsing with blood, her light body warmed. Small fireworks explode in the back of my head. Ah! I hear a scream. My hands wrap around her throat. What? My breathing is out of control. What am I trying to do? Shiki! Her voice cuts off. Not caring, I grip harder. Grip. The bone in her necks creak. Stop! A small tearing sound. My fingers dig into my arm. She must be getting frantic on the being on the verge of death like that. Her nails push through my clothes and into the meat of my arm. Pain. Well, not as much pain as Kohaku must be feeling. But blood flows. It runs from my arm and onto Kohaku's gra- on my hand grasping Kohaku's neck. Panted, deep red. Her unresting neck is now running with blood. I can't really feel her anymore. Just the fact that she'll die in a few seconds. <laughs> Seems so funny to me. I start laughing. It hasn't even been a minute since I grasped her neck. She won't die of suffocation, but here by my hand. <laughs> For no reason, suddenly. <laughs> like a simple appliance. <laughs> She'll die by having the bones in her neck break. Look, in an instant, like being freed from demonic possession, the heat disappears. Before my eyes is, a, is the bloodied body of Kohaku. My hand is grasping her neck in any second now. I quickly let go. Without a sound, Kohaku falls to the floor. Uh, Kohaku breathes painfully with her eyes closed. Kohaku, she's alive. Just a little longer. If I kept going just a little longer, I would've. Uh, she's crying. Collapsed on the floor, not able to move. She's crying. Looking down. Her kimono is covered with white fluid. That is my seam. So this nigga, 
All right. So you mean to tell me that this nigga here, he was like, he was like, yeah, choke this bitch to death. Yeah, choke this bitch to death. Yeah, choke this. Oh, and then he just fucking blew all over her. I, I hope, I hope that's what it was. I, 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 my, by, I'm praying that he's thinking that he, you know, he's just tweaking out and, you know, his vision is fucked up and he's actually looking at blood, but like his eyes are fucked up right now. So you see, he thinks the blood is white and he's mistaking it for something else. You know, that's what I'm praying for. But in the, in the likely case that that actually is semen, um, I hope like, you know, he didn't actually do any any sexual thing to her and you know he just got excited from choking the bitch and you know had a involuntary reaction you know that's i feel like that's a lot more stomachable than you know what the other thing that could be implied here what the fuck shaky you're not the goat anymore hold on shaky you're on fraud watch right now <laughs> shaky you're on fraud watch right now you know you're gonna have to do something crazy if you want to be the goat again I, that is my semen. Oh, let me start over. <laughs> She's crying. Collapsed on the floor, not able to move. She's crying. Looking down, her kimono was covered with white fluid. That is my semen. I, by doing that, was released from whatever it was inside of me. <laughs> I can't believe it. While one hand was choking Kohaku, my other hand was reveling in the pleasure of killing something. That is, they somehow found a middle ground between the two things I theorized. That is just as bad. What the fuck? Thump. It isn't over. I'm still fully erect, and more than that, I'm not satisfied myself. I'm so thirsty. I've done such a terrible thing to Kohaku, but it doesn't seem to end. The truth is, my regret is fading even more as I look at Kohaku's neck, her white neck, put my teeth at her throat in. I want to suck her blood. <laughs> I broke apart. <laughs> I really broke down. I'm done. No longer do I have the confidence to stay sane. <laughs> <laughs> outside i have to go outside if i stay here i'll kill kohaku if i stay in the mansion i'll kill even akiha and hisui so before those urges come again i have to disappear <laughs> a place where no one is i have to go to a place where no one is or i'll go crazy again i leave the mansion what the hell is going on? Even though there's no one around, I can feel the presence of people. Buildings. From the houses around me, I sense people. With all these people here, I won't be able to hold back again. Somewhere. I have to go somewhere without people around or I'll never be able to calm down. Where no one is. Where there's no residences nearby. Somewhere where even if I go crazy again, I won't cause anyone trouble. No one else is in the park. There's no houses nearby. No one's supposed to be here, but I still can't calm down. No matter how far away they are, there are houses all around here. I can see the lights of the town in the distance too. It doesn't exist. Yeah, it doesn't exist. There's no place in the city where you can't sense any humans. There's really no place where I can truly be alone in this civilized city. Damn it. All around me. So many people are all around me. If I walk just a little, I can catch all the prey I want. Shut up. My head hurts. Even though I finally don't see the lines anymore, I'll start to see them again like this. Huh? Wait, Shaky. Isn't it strange? Because it's not like I was seeing these lines because I was excited. Those lines are the things I can't help but see when I don't have my glasses on. So even if I calm down... I would still I would still be I would still see them if I don't have my glasses on. But I've dropped my glasses. They're here. 
and bring my fingers to my face and find out my glasses were there all along. In other words, even if I wear the glasses Sensei gave me, I can't control my eyes anymore. <laughs> I'm hit with the truth. Just like Roa said, I just didn't realize that I was already insane. That night, ever since that time when I wanted from the bottom of my heart to kill that bastard who was disgracing Sheil. Oh, then the headache from that time was the headache from when I was fighting Roa. When I saw those lines of death, even when I don't remember taking off my glasses. And when Sheil, when I got Sheil to go find them for me. Since that time, I, even when I wore my glasses, regardless of what my intentions were, I've been able to see those lines. Senpai knew. No, she probably just didn't tell me. So as not to worry me, she lied to protect my mistaken perceptions. I see, Senpai. She told me to talk to her if anything happened. I've already memorized her phone number. Thirsty ass nigga? He dying of thirst. Phone. There's a payphone nearby. What am I going to do by calling her? No one can heal my body. Even S.H.I.E.L.D. can't heal what's inside me. Nigga, if you don't go to S.H.I.E.L.D. But I want to see her. I want to hear S.H.I.E.L.D.'s voice. The only one I can talk to. The only one who will listen to me. If she's there, then I can remain as Tono Shiki. I turn the dial. After three rings, I hear the receiver pick up in S.H.I.E.L.D.'s voice. Hello? Who is it? It's strange. Her voice seems so warm. Hello? Hey, can you hear me? Her questioning voice. I've only been there once, but I can imagine her holding the phone in her room. I can't speak. I don't know what to say. I knew I shouldn't have called. I can't get this person involved. I should, I should just hang up without saying anything. Tono. Is that you, Tono? I, hearing my name, I suddenly want to cry. Yes. I slip out a response. Oh, I knew it was you, Tono. Why are you calling this late? I tell myself to stop. I tell myself to make up some excuse. Tell her I'll see her tomorrow and hang up. But I can't seem to do that. Senpai, I... I, I think I'm not going to make it. I speak in a fading voice. Tono. It sounds like her voice froze. Tono, what do you mean? What's wrong? I mean, I can't make it. I tried to resist it, but it was useless. Like you said, it seems like I'm just a killer. And a really bad one, too. Even now, if I let my guard down, I want to slice my knife through Akiha's or Hisui's throat. Not just someone off the street, but people close to me. My sanity is about to crumble away. I'm at the point of thinking such things. What should I do? I can't kill myself. I've never been taught how to kill myself. And where are you right now? In the park. I, I wanted to go so I wanted to go where there aren't any people, but there's too many houses nearby. I'm going crazy. I understand. I head to the school, so let's meet there. There's no houses nearby, so wanna be quiet? That's right. At, at, at school. There won't be anyone there. Alright? Please wait for me at the school grounds. The line cuts off. I exit the phone booth. Senpai. I can see Sheil. I don't think anything can. Sh I don't think anything will change when I see her, but I still want to see her. Gah! My body starts to get hot again. Hoping I won't meet anyone on the way to school, I leave the park with uncertain steps. The school is dead quiet. There's no houses nearby, so it's very quiet around here. <sighs> I take off my glasses and cut the lock on the school gate with my knife. Ah, uh, I can't believe it. Even without thinking about it, I seem to have put my knife in my pocket. Probably so at any time I can kill someone. <sighs> I fall to my knees as soon as I get to school grounds. I brace myself off the ground using both my hands. My whole body is hot. But I don't feel like I don't feel like I'm not me anymore. Probably by violating Kohaku, the impulse momentarily subsided. Gorge rises in my throat. My mouth tastes bitter. I haven't eaten anything today, so all I can vomit is my stomach acid. Kohaku. 
There isn't something forgiven with a mere apology, so I can't apologize. How can I offer my atonement to her from now on? The conversation so many days ago, when Shield helped me when I was in the depths of despair after I killed Arukai, that person, she told me that there weren't people who sinned and people who did not sin. I mean, she told me that there weren't people who sinned and people who did not sin, but there are only people who can sin and who cannot atone for their sins. So what should I do? My committed sin, the wounded mind, can it be atoned for? It suddenly got darker, the sound of footsteps. I didn't realize this as I was face down, but someone is coming under the moonlight. Did that person darken the sky with the shadow? Are you trying to repent, Tono? Sheil asked in a cold voice. Senpai, she really came. I want to see her face, so I lift my head like I'm looking up at the night sky. Huh? But this... This isn't the shield that I know. Her bare arms have the tattoo of a cross on them. Her cold eyes as if watching someone she doesn't even know. Senpai bears an uncouth weapon with an aura of coldness that doesn't suit her. Ah, I know this. Inside my brain, I know what weapon this is. This has to be what's called the Seventh Holy Scripture, one of the Apocrypha that must never be removed from its resting place. Senpai, as I expected, you were row after all, Tono. With the frigid eyes, Senpai speaks with a voice that is equally cold. I start to feel a shiver up my spine. For no reason, no. My instincts in my brain work full force to tell me the danger and I jump back. Still, with her mouth shut, she takes a step towards me with that ominous weapon. She has no openings whatsoever. If I run away hastily, if I show my back to her, I know that thing will pierce my heart and I'll disappear without the opportunity for reincarnation ever again. Even though, I don't even have the knowledge of my memories. Why? I just... I just wanted to see Senpai again. I understand. Ro is al I understand. Ro is already surfacing, right? Then it's too late already. Lightly, she takes another effortless step forward. That figure looks like... What are you doing, senpai? You look like you're, you're gonna kill me. She doesn't answer. She just stares at me like she's trying to figure out where she can aim to kill me quickly. S senpai. She's serious. She seriously plans to kill me. Freak. My nerves feel an imminent death before me. My spine is screaming and the back of my neck is numbing. But more than this fear of death, I can't believe this person is saying such things. Why? I don't know. Senpai, you said you stayed here for my sake. With a start, Shield's legs stop. She looks at me and grins. Your goodness really is a rare treasure. It is a good thing to trust people. But if you were a little more composed and thought about it clearly, you could have maybe got away. Huh? First of all, did you ever think about why I came to this school in the first place? I didn't do it because I wanted to, you know? S Senpai? You knew my goal was to destroy the serpent, Roa. Coming here to this school was because I knew Roa's reincarnated host was here. But since I didn't know for sure, I needed to check things out for a while. Wait a minute, what in the world are you... What is she babbling about? I don't know. I really can't understand what she's talking about. She ignores my bewilderment and keeps talking. I told you before, Tono. Roa has requirements for the family he decides to reincarnate into. If you think the other way around, you just have to look for families with those traits. But you know that finding him is very simple. It's easy to find families that have special abilities passed down through their blood once you do a bit of research. In this city, there's only one family that fits Roa's requirements. So I knew from the beginning who Roa was. What? That's strange. If she knew from the beginning, she could have killed him or caught him right then. From the beginning? She knew who it was? Yes. Look, don't you realize it now? You know, Tono. I came to the school to catch you from the beginning. Wait. 
I just want her to, to wait. But a little mistake happened. I was watching you from afar so as not to stimulate Ro inside you. But I concluded that you might not be Roa's new reincarnated host. But the eldest son of the Tono family had to be what Roa reincarnates into. There's no mistake in that. So what had to be the mistake was you, Tono. Shield speaks matter-of-factly. I can't say anything. Looking into it, you were fatally wounded eight years ago and adopted by your relatives. What happened afterwards was exactly what Tono Shiki said two nights ago. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened in the Tono family eight years ago, but you were killed by that kid called Shiki. No, it's more like your life was stolen. As a result, you became to Shiki, who was Roa's host. A direct voice without emotion. I don't know this shield. Or this... Is this the true shield? And the kind of person I knew up until now was all just... Up until now, there should have been times where Roa's memory would flow into you through Shiki. He's a vampire that manipulated this shapeless thing called a soul. For Roa, you two shared one life where a finely crafted double existence. That's why when Shiki's body was destroyed, Roa didn't need to reincarnate. He still had a place to run to. You. Cold. As if hating her enemy, she detests me. But it's all over now. I wasn't prepared to finish it so suddenly that one night, but tonight is different. I really am fortunate in a way. If Araka had destroyed Roa, she probably would, he probably would have reincarnated again. I can't believe this. That, 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 that's not true. Go ahead, please keep denying it and play dumb. That makes my job easier. Still, the metallic rattle sounds from the weapon. It doesn't change the fact I can finish you off easily no matter what you do, Roa. Her laughing voice causes me to finally understand. She isn't lying. Her eyes aren't looking at me. Her feelings never did have anything to do with me from the beginning. What is this? And from the very beginning, you always thought of me as Roa? Senpai, being friends with me was all just... I can't say it. I can't finish the sentence. If I do that, I feel like everything will turn into a lie in that instant. Of course. After Shiki was destroyed, the only reason I stayed in school was because Roa had not disappeared. Since Roa is a student here, it's more convenient for me to stay. I would never go back while leaving you here. That's what she told me once with a smile. That wasn't for my sake. She stayed here just to search for the still living Roa. That is the only reason why she gave me her phone number. Then that too. And those times too. <laughs> and when she saved me that one night too. <sighs> and those sad eyes too. <sighs> That's right, Shaky. This is nothing at all. These memories, they are nothing at all. I just thought I loved her. And that she loved me back. What a joke. They were all just an illusion made from a play. All of it. All of it was a fairy tale made up of lies. I understand. But Senpai, how did you know Roa was still alive? How... How did you know Roa reincarnated into this Tono Shiki? Of course I knew. Because it's about myself. Senpai says something I can't understand about yourself. Yes, the one who sought out the Tono family and chose it for the next host was me. Well, unless Roa's consciousness awakens, I couldn't tell that it was. I, could, I couldn't tell that it appeared, so I wasn't that useful of a memory, though. Senpai, wh what are you saying? What am I saying? It's an old story. It's a story from eight years ago. But there was a girl like you who didn't know anything. She was 16 years old when that impulse began to stain her. But before that, there was nothing. She didn't have a special power like you did, Tono. She really did live a normal life without knowing anything. Helping out her father, going to school. 
terrible at waking up early, but always helping with the store in the evening. She really did think she would carry on her father's work. Huh? Just now. Scenery I've never seen before flashes in my head. Yet I feel like I've seen it somewhere. Her story feels like it's very similar to that dream I saw. But her dream wasn't fulfilled. With her own hand, she destroyed the happiness that was there naturally because she was Ro as a reincarnated host. Her body had great ability and Ro was pleased. She tried so hard to resist it just like you, but it was useless. In the end, she drank the blood of her father and mother and slowly killed the townspeople. That child, maybe she went crazy then. You understand, right, Tona? You can't stop it. Stop, or you shouldn't. Doesn't even enter your thoughts. Isn't it strange? Even though you still have your conscious awareness? Senpai, don't tell me that story is. But that nightmare came to an end soon. That woman in white came and pierced her heart. Yeah, I know. So the girl died and Roa reincarnated as Tono Shiki. But that, that's, but that girl, she couldn't stay dead. Quietly, almost laughing, she says this. Her dead body was taken to the church and preserved as a sample of a vampire returning to human form. But though I don't know what kind of fate it was, her body was a special body and had an abnormal reviving ability. One day, three years later, even though she shouldn't have, she came back from the dead. It's strange, isn't it? Even though it was just a discarded shell of Roa's soul, it still came back to life. After that, things were difficult. The church viewed the child's existence as heresy and killed the child. But no matter how many times they killed her, she wouldn't die. I'm sorry, can I complain a bit? That girl, she underwent an entire month of life only being killed. Every single day, without even a single moment of rest, she came back to life only to be killed once more. Every day, all day. What? A body that can't die. Flesh that returns to its original state no matter what happens. Roa, the vampire reincarnated as Tono Shiki, said, this about, said that about this person. It seems so painful. Senpai healed no matter what wound she received. But every wound she got caused her face to contort in pain. Every day of that. Every day, all day without a single pause. Living to be killed and coming back again. And then the people of the church finally realized this was too strange. All the problems that can all the problems that no one can deal with or solve are handed to the people of called the burial agency. There she was taught what happened to her. In short, she was a contradiction. She was a human born as Roa. Even though the personality of her first fifteen years was hers, the name of her soul was Roa. While even what while she was herself, she was also Roa. While she was so so is it so it is a contradiction if the girl called if the girl called Roa is dead when Roa is alive, the progeny that ex, the progeny of the existence Roa, the daughter of Roa cannot die before him. Whenever this world has even a slight error, the world corrects itself to preserve itself. So that child, as long as Roa's soul can exist, it will exist for his all eternity. No one else but the world itself fixes the error automatically. The clergy said the child was outside the cycle. As long as Roa lives, it will forever be stopped. She cannot die of old age and she cannot age. And even if she was burnt to ashes, time would reverse itself and return to its original state. Such a monster. It usually would have been sealed away forever, but she happened to inherit the magical knowledge of Roa. The clergy of the burial agency said she would be useful and brought her into the church. Five years since then, she chose to discard her name and live as one who hunted vampires. But more than Roa's master, Arukai, I can tell where Roa's soul exists. The reason, I don't have to tell you, right? Right, it doesn't have to be said. But I don't want to admit such a thing. I said it before, Tono. Shield's goal is one thing and one thing only. I want to die as a human. I didn't understand what those words meant then, but now, 
Now, can I understand at least a bit of it? I can't. It's almost regretful, but I can't. I can't understand that feeling of wanting to die. As long as I'm alive, I'll think about wanting to die, but I would never truly mean it. But that's all senpai wishes for. A way of thinking which is transformed into that. A life that makes you wish only that. I don't know yet. With my own hands. I don't know the pain of killing the ones close to me. With my own hands, even while still conscious. And I don't ever want to know it. But this person has lived through it. So is that why she just wants to die? That, that's wrong. It's not. I simply want to die as a human. Her voice sounds cold. I, I can only nod. Both her wish and her pain I understand. I don't want it. I don't like my treatment or Shield's wish. I don't want to think that this is reality. But time waits for no one. With a metallic rattle, the agent called Shield steps forward to kill me. As if saying there's no need to talk anymore, Shield's hands lift up that weapon. The seventh holy scripture. The weapon that the reincarnation denying church created. A scriptural canon inscribed with every possible impeachment of reincarnation criticism. It's an item that is scripture yet an apocrypha. A weapon that is scripture. A weapon yet a scripture at the same time. If I'm hit by that, my soul itself will disperse into nothingness. The bayonet rises up. A tip comes towards me, but slowly. If it is shield, she should be able to pierce me without even noticing it ever happened. Uh, I see. There's no time to think. I'm gonna be real. I don't know what to do. I feel like, first of all, I don't think either way is going to work, you know? But if one of them does work, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know if I should pick the option that I think would get him killed or pick the option that would save him. Because honestly, like, I'm with S.H.I.E.L.D. here. We can't let this dude live. He has to die. We, we have to kill. We have to kill Shiki. He has to die. So I don't know. I feel like the only I feel like the only good ending here and the only possible ending is if Shiki dies. So I really don't know which why like, what I should be going for here. Let's skate forward. I fall forward. I felt from before that if I turned and ran, my heart would be shot from behind. Yeah. Her sword flies flies past my head. It seems really slow. I evade her attack, move right beside her, and... The instant I tried to run forward, Senpai's movement changed drastically. In an instant, with the speed that makes her seem to have literally disappeared, she swings her weapon horizontally. The rush of the wind fills my ears, and for some reason, I'm standing many meters away from her. She clicks her tongue and glares at me. Ow! My left hand hurts. What, huh? I'm surprised. From the elbow down, my arm is broken. I'm broken normally, but my lower arm is bent in the shape of a triangle. Sacrificing your arm to save your head. If you didn't do anything, I would have ended it painlessly for you. What? Even though I didn't notice it, I must have broken my arm defending against her attack. Aren't you going to pull out your knife? She looks at me with a bored expression. She's looking down at me. She looks down at me as if saying she could kill me at any moment. Don't get pissed off. Pain. Pain shoots from my arm to my brain. The blood from my broken arm seems to flow like poison into my nerves, sharply. Just with that, my mind fills with a white blankness. She continues to look at me with those cold eyes. You. You. You break my arm and you still act that way? Do you know how much this hurts? Making a fool of me. Making such a fool of me. Making a fool of me. 
That's how you're going to be, senpai. I gripped the knife in my pocket. I'm not just going to stand here helplessly. The hard feeling of metal and let you kill me. With a quick snap, I take out the blade of my knife. Are you stupid? Instantly, her body explodes. No, that's not right. She crouches down low to the ground, almost like a lizard, and runs up towards me in a flash. She closes the distance of six meters in a flash. She's not in my vision at all. Her whole body is below my knee height and explodes upward from there, a thud. From right beneath me, her bayonet accurately shoots directly from my throat. Gah! I gasped. Pain, is there pain? Yet I can still feel pain. Conscious, am I conscious? All right, I still have that. Ah, my body, my body is not okay. A dripping sound. It's coming from my left shoulder. Looking at it, it's already a waterfall of blood which pours straight down. Just now, the bayonet didn't hit my throat but my left shoulder. Ah, ah, it hurts. It hurts so much, the word pain doesn't even come close to describing it. Ah! Ah! But I'm alive. Still, I'm alive. My body. My body is away from her again. I smell a whiff of gunpowder from my shoulder. Ah. Just now. The instant the bayonet pierced me, she must have pulled the trigger. I was blown away by that, and there's distance between us again. If it happened twice, that must mean it's not a coincidence. With that much blood pouring out, not dying from shock must already be a sign that your body has begun to change. <sighs> the, sound, the metallic sound. The sword on the end of the weapon changes into a new one. The sword that shot me just now falls and turns into pages of a book and scatters. That's ridiculous. But that ridiculous thing is really frightening. That just touching me carries a fatal poison. Death. I'll die. Without a doubt, I'll be killed. Will I die? Is that what I'm scared of? I don't know. My shoulder is burning. Hot is hot. As if my entire body will burst into flames. She readies the weapon once more with another metallic clang. Twice. Withstanding that twice can be nothing but a miracle. The next time will certainly. I imagine that bayonet piercing me right in the face. That's more repulsive than frightening. Death is, no matter how it happens, something useless, dirty, and disgusting. I like myself, so I won't let that happen. I don't want that to happen. Is that why I'm scared? I don't know. Come to think of it, I was always able to see death, but I never thought about death at all. No, it doesn't really matter right now. I have to escape. I don't want to die, so I have to get away. You want to take off your glasses? A simple plastic voice. Those words, I gasp at their meaning. Because taking them off means I would see Senpai's lines. If that happens, I might kill her. What? What are you saying, Senpai? A chill runs through me. The air suddenly becomes saturated with murderous intent. I can't spend any more time with you. Please, just die already. Her figure plunges low again. She's coming. Even though I know she's going to run towards me again, it's hard for me to even see her. I can only think of escaping. If I don't want to be killed, escape is my only option. Fortunately, our distance is almost 10 meters. If I run as fast as I can, I can make it to the school building. Maybe I might be able to do something if I can get into a less open space. My back. Something pierced my back. Ah! My body falls forward, just a little more. And it was just a little more before I could enter the school building. Gah! I lift myself up with one arm. What sticks through me is one of those swords that looks like a nail that Senpai was using before. Why you? I must be numb to pain, and I pull out the sword skewering my back from behind. Since it penetrated through me, I got mad and pulled it out from my chest. All right. Now I can escape inside. What do you plan on doing by escaping, Tono? Before that, I hear Senpai's voice from behind me. You still don't understand. 
How fast do you think you just ran here? Why are you still alive after receiving that fatal wound? St My mind begins to white out. Don't let her trick you. Don't let her trick you. Hasn't she been deceiving you all along? Don't listen to her anymore. If you listen, you'll die. Ignore her. Don't accept it. Even if it is the truth, this body can only reject it. Stop it! Jeez, there's nowhere for you to run to. You can only fight or be killed. But if you can't fight, you can only die. Her footsteps. With the sound of footsteps, Senpai approaches. I leap. My back, my shoulders, my arm are all almost dead. But I leap as if it was nothing. I can't even believe it myself. Still breathing wildly and with a speed that matches Senpai, I run into the school building. I run. Without thinking, just wanting to escape, I continue running. But I'm at my limit. Is it because I'm out of breath or is it because the wounds won't let me move my arms and legs anymore? Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. My breathing becomes more forced. At the end of the hallway, coming into the wall aimlessly, I fall. I fall on my back and try to get up. I feel foolish for doing so. Sitting cross-legged on the floor, I lean my back against the wall. Throwing back my head, I take a big breath of air. The moon. Looking up, I can see the moonlight through the window. Is it because I'm so exhausted? Everything I look at seems vague, as if everything was covered in a mist. Vagueness. Does that mean it is indefinite? The same as me? The same as the person called Tono Shiki? Indefinite? Ouch. My shoulder throbs in pain. If I was a, if I was as definite as this pain, maybe this wouldn't have happened. I'm starting to not understand. I always thought I was Tono Shiki, but that was a different person. And they tell me I'm just an adopted son from somewhere. Being adopted means I should have memories before I came to the Tono Mansion, but there's nothing. I, really, I only have the memories of Tono Shiki. The night sky is a solitary moon. It's incredibly strange. Why didn't I realize it until now? Tonight is so... In the end, just what was I? It's stupid not knowing anything about myself and just disappearing like this. Everything is so vague, it's stupid. A world where I can see death. A vision where I can perceive death. That day eight years ago, I was able to meet Senpai and was able to live normally. I can still declare that it was, it, was a prop, it was proper to meet her. But Sensei, I... I guess I was someone who shouldn't be alive. I should end my life while some part of me can still think that. But I can't do it. I can't kill myself. Even if it is pointless, even if it was a mistake, I want to keep on living. If I die, everything will become a lie. I want to keep on living. No matter how wrong it is. No matter how many things I have to lose, I want to keep on living. Only her. If only I had shield with me, I wouldn't care what else I had to lose. For that sole reason I have to, I, I've kept on living like this. But that's all over now. These past five years, was it a long time? Was it a short time? I don't know. Liar. I don't want to hear those words. I have to thank you, Tono. My work here is done now. All that's left is for me to take responsibility for all my actions. Liar. Yeah. But maybe there was some truth in there too. Because even though she deceived me, not once. Thank you so much for everything until now. It's been a long time since I've been this happy. So let's finish with the handshake. You big liar. Not even once did she lie to me. Even though I'm not going to be here, please stay friends with Inui. I wanted to be a student like you in Inui. But that person herself was a lie. I can't even think that smile could really be, be a lie. But this is what reality is. Shield is a lie. So she was staying near me only so she could kill me. I was fooled. She did not love me at all. And when she helped me, when I was completely lost too, and the time we spent during breaks for no reason, too. 
All of it was just to confirm if I was Ro or not. I grit my teeth. I grit my teeth hard. Damn it! I scratched the wall in frustration. Yes, I was tricked. Shill got closer to me, calculating everything. Even still, feeling pain in my heart, I scratched the wall. Yes, I was tricked. But still, I can't hate Senpai. No way I can hate her. Even if it was all a lie for her, I really enjoyed it. No matter what, that's still true. It was only less than two weeks since I met Senpai, but I really was happy. Damn it! That's why I can't hate her. But that's just an illusion, only for me. That's why I regret only that. My vision wavers. Outside the window lies the white night. It's quiet here. Almost like the bottom of a deep sea, wavering quietly. Everything is fake, an illusion that disappears when you approach it, like a mirage you can never get grasp. I can hear her footsteps. She's coming. Kill her? Inside my head, I hear those words. If you don't want to die, slice her apart. If you think you're not mistaken, slice her apart. Just slice her apart already. Slice her apart, slice her apart, slice her apart. Slice, 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 slice. Looks like I'm really done. My head starts to rage again. But still, I don't want to die. If I don't want to die, there's only one thing to do. The footsteps get louder. Her shadow grows larger. Aren't you going to take off your glasses? Even knowing what it meant, she said that. In that case, no, 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 no. I hate to say it, man, but Shiki has to die. Right now, I'm saying kill Shiki. I'm going to see what happens if Shiki dies because I feel like this is how it should go. This is how, this is the good ending. This is how we get good ending. And what do I do? No way. I bring my slightly trembling fingers up to my glasses and throw. Clank. The dull sound echoes through the hallway. There's no way I can do that! I shout angrily at the other person inside my head. It's the first time I ever wanted to kill myself. Clank. Clank. The hard object rolls along the floor. I don't see any lines. What I threw away was my knife. I don't take I won't take off my glasses. I'll never do that. It's just that since I don't have since I didn't have confidence in myself, I threw away my knife. If I kept holding it, I know I would have done something worse than me dying. And then she arrives. Neither her emotionless eyes nor that foreboding weapon change. She stops in front of me as I sit on the ground. How come? She doesn't finish me off. We both stare at each other aimlessly. I have one question. The tip of her bayonet aims at my chest. Why didn't you take off your glasses? Why didn't you try even why didn't you even try to fight me once? It's simple. It's just that the thought never crossed my mind. I can't do such a horrible thing to you, Senpai. Horrible? Are you stupid? I'm going to kill you. I'm not your senpai. I told you everything was a lie and you still don't understand. Her voice sounds irritated. She's really angry. I realize that there that even though that I realize that even though her face is calm, her legs and arms are literally shaking with anger. I know. Senpai, you were deceiving me up until now. This person called Shiel never existed from the beginning. I understand that. If you understand, then why? It's okay. Even if Senpai was a lie, it doesn't matter. I really had a lot of fun. The time we spent together may not mean much to you, but it was very dear to me. That's why it's okay. Even if it's all a lie to Senpai, the fact that I was saved by that is still true. That's why it's okay. These past two weeks really were fun. But if I hate you here, I'll lose even that. Even if it's a lie to you, that's only half of it. As for my half, I want to make it real until the very end. 
although exchanging my life for that might be a comical wish. That. For that, are you even gonna throw away your life? Such a wish. Your wish is something that small? I see. Maybe it is kind of small. But right now, that's the second dearest thing to me. I can only think of one other wish. I can only think of one wish other than that. I've seen many people, but she takes a step forward. This is the first time I've met someone as stupid as you. Senpai places the tip of her bayonet right up against my heart. How come? She doesn't pull the trigger. Her eyes looking at me are completely empty. Those emotionless eyes that Senpai shows me. It doesn't mean she's a cold-hearted person, but simply, she can't deceive herself. So in the end, I suppose all she could do was just kill her emotions. Yeah, I finally realized it. Whenever she showed those eyes, she wasn't fooling me, she was fooling herself. You're not gonna kill me, senpai? I forgot. In the end, I still must hear your confession. I am a member of the church after all. Oh. I don't have anything to confess, but can I ask something? Yes. Please, make it short. Yeah, it'll be quick. It's just... I was wondering why you look like you're gonna cry. Like a jolt. I think Shield's body trembled. I'm not crying. Certainly, her face is stone cold as she denies this. Hearing that, I even tilt my head to the side. But all the same, I... But you still look like you're about to cry. I don't know why, though. It's just your imagination. I don't feel anything. The only emotion I have is the desire to die as a human. There's nothing else. She says this with her emotionless eyes. It's terribly sad. Knowing she's lying right now is just too ironic. How terrible. Even to the end, you're gonna lie to me, senpai? No response. As if she was frozen, she doesn't move. What about you? You're lying. I don't think your wish is to be killed here by me, right? Of course. Because if you die, there's nothing. I've already experienced it once, so I understand that. To tell the truth, I want to live. But I don't want to just live. Yes, I don't want that. Even if I manage to keep living, there's nothing for me after that. The person called Tono Shiki would die and would do things just like this person experienced. But more than that, if I live here, that means Senpai will be gone. Will not be able to bear living like that. Senpai, everything was fun up until now. The times I spent with you and Arahiko weren't bad. Even during breaks when you came, it was fun, almost like a dream. That's probably what my wish is. It can never be granted, but I really wanted that kind of life to continue. You still don't understand. I already said it was all fake. Yeah, but still, it was really fun. The instant I say that, my heart calms down. It's okay if it's just an unreachable illusion. I don't care if it was a mirage that never existed in the first place. No. No, maybe because it was an illusion, even now. The times I spent with Senpai feel so dear to me. No matter what, I can't escape now. And if I can just keep watching that dream, then it would be such a great... How? Foolish, she says. And she slightly moves her bayonet. She sticks into my chest. Just a little bit. It only goes into me slightly, like a fingernail's depth. Her eyes have stopped. All that's left is for her to take another step and it'll all be over. But that final step doesn't start. Bracing the bayonet, she stares at me with her emotionless eyes. She grits her teeth painfully. I see. It must be too difficult for her to do it while I'm looking at her. More than anything else, I also don't want to see this person's face on the verge of tears. So I won't trouble her anymore. I decide to close my eyes and accept my end. Thump. My heart quivers. Even though I'm prepared, the nausea and chills don't go away. Thump, 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 thump. 
My throat is burning. My fingertips shake uncontrollably. I know. I know this is the best way, but still, I'm just scared. I frantically try to hold my breath as this try as this spill. Try I. I frantically try to hold my breath that tries to spill out. She simply has to move 10 centimeters forward and I'll turn her to a mere lump of flesh. Even though I'm supposed to be ready for this, my fearful heart is scared of disappearing without a trace. All I can do is frantically close my mouth and try to accept my fate. It would probably hurt if I got stabbed in the chest. I'm scared of not being able to think like I am right now. Sweat beads on my forehead. But still, I don't want to speak. If I quietly let everything in, then I probably won't have to feel guilty. I hear a gasp. Why? A forced voice. Why? How? The sword sticking in my chest quivers. How can you not hate me? No. What's quivering is Senpai's voice. I... I'm trying to kill you. I've deceived you until now. I've betrayed you and mercilessly hunted you down. Why does your face look so peaceful? Tap. With the sword still in place, she takes another step towards me. Answer me! I'm going to kill you! Without any regard to your own will, just a one-sided murder. Then you won't be compensated unless you hate me, right? Senpai questions me, burning intensity. Quit it. I'm working so hard to resist this fear, but if I answer now, my feelings might flow out. Are you really that stupid? I'm exterminating you as a dirty vampire, so why? Didn't I tell her it was nothing earlier? Because it isn't your fault, senpai. Slice. The tip of the blade cuts into me further. It must have broken the skin because flush blood... Fresh blood seeps over my chest. Ugh! Sharp pain. The wound isn't even deep. But just the slightest penetration by the seventh holy scripture causes my mind to shatter. Ah! My body shakes uncontrollably. The blood in my body reverses flow and I almost cough up blood in my pain. It hurts, right? I can actually terminate you without making you feel pain. But I'm hurting you like this on purpose. Uh, unless I enjoy this, we won't, we won't be able to call it even for all the time I had to spend with you until now. She seems to be speaking with difficulty. The bayonet plunges deeper. Ah! Uh! The pain causes sweat to pour out from me. I feel like my insides are going to flow out through my mouth. See, don't you hate me, Tono? So please hate me. Tell me I betrayed you. Tell me it would have been better if you had never trusted me. If you don't, I won't be able to kill you. Her voice shakes as she says this. But that's just strange. It's better if I don't hate her. But she still wants me to hate her. It's like she's telling me that being the bad guy like that is her punishment. Ah. But that's an impossible order. There's no way I can hate her. I just can't hate this person who looks like a child on the verge of tears. You can't be serious. I can't hate you, senpai. Stop it, please. Why are you saying that till the very end? I'm the one who's to blame. You're just a victim. Isn't senpai a victim too? And no matter what, I'll be taken over by Roa soon. Before that, before I make mistakes like S.H.I.E.L.D. did, I have to kill Roa. There isn't any other way to vanquish Roa than my death, so it just can't be helped. It's okay. It's not your fault. More than that, I'm sorry. Sorry to make you do this, senpai. Stop! Stop it. She says in a quiet voice, and her bayonet pulls from my chest slightly. No, I, I, I can't let Roa escape! The tip of the seventh holy scripture wavers. But that should end soon. I can't allow that, Tono. A grinding sound. Senpai grits her teeth and stops the seventh holy scripture. The tip of the the tip of it points at my heart. I hear her suck in a breath. Even with my eyes closed, I can feel her trigger gripping the I can feel her finger gripping the trigger. Click. Right before the hard metallic sound. 
Thank you. Thank you. Even if it was a lie, it was good having you as senpai. In the end, I say what I wanted to tell her most. I can hear a voice sobbing. I can hear a voice that sounds like a crying child. A loud thud. The metallic pile falls to the floor. A bayonet sticks into the wall behind me like a spear. A pained voice. I realize who that voice is coming from and I open my eyes slowly. There isn't senpai that was there just now. The one I see standing before me is just a girl crying painfully. Her hands are empty. The seventh holy scripture lies fallen on the floor. The bayonet that should have pierced my heart is thrust by my side. Senpai just cries. I don't know what she's sad about. When she cries so painfully, I expect her to cough up blood. Senpai. I call out to her. That's not fair, Tono. It's not fair. Her throat convulses as she shouts like a spoiled child. Saying, saying such a thing isn't fair. Why, why can't I? Her tears course down her face. I can't, even though I can kill myself at any time. If you say that to me, I can't. She seems ashamed to see me. Saying thank you like that, I can't. Let such a happy person die like that. She covers her face with her hands and continues to weep. Senpai, seeing you cry makes me trouble because I won't know what to do. My words might have been the wrong choice as Senpai cries even louder. Jeez, why are you doing this all of a sudden? I don't even understand why I did that, but I can't leave this person who's crying in front of me. So I pull her to me and embrace her. We collide with a thud. Senpai collapses on my chest and continues crying as she stifles her voice. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. With a quivering voice, she says this over and over. What is this? Then the real lie was the senpai up until now. Finally, I get to meet senpai. It was about an hour after I called her, but I feel like I've waited for so long. I don't have to apologize, senpai. I just wanted to do so, and I embrace her with my still functioning right hand. A voice like something stretched seems what a voice like something stretched was just snapped. Senpai finally stops crying. Thump, thump. I can hear the heartbeat of the person across from me like my own. It's awfully quiet. I can't find the right words to say. But staying like this, just hearing her heartbeat is good enough. What I really wanted, what I really wished for was just a small thing. Like this, it was just fine having Senpai like she is. Senpai, your body is warm. No, the one who's warm is you, Tono. I'm a very cold person. I did such terrible things to such a nice person. No, senpai. I'm not kind. Even now, I just want to touch you, senpai. I just want to stay like this forever. It's okay. I'm still alive, so it's okay. If we can keep doing this, it's okay. I died a long time ago. After that, I realized how much happiness it was just to be alive. A world where death can be seen. A world where I can see death. Every time, things that are easily lost. But that's why being alive is happiness. To feel that, being able to feel Senpai's warmth like this, is an exceeding happiness by itself. Senpai, you really are dear to me. I don't want to die. I want to live as much as I can and I want to be with you like this, Senpai. Firmly, I grip her hands. So I want you to live. Please. Please, don't say your wish is to die. There's no answer. Thump, thump. Just the beating of her heart through our skin. 
No, that can't happen. Suddenly, she speaks in a crying voice. That's the only thing that's kept me going until now. I could die. If Roa disappeared, I could die. I must die. That's why I could bear everything so far. Because I killed my father and mother. Because I killed everyone. Because it became like this. Because I tricked you and tried to kill you. I... Without delay, I have to die. Why do you have to die? Certainly, you've done a lot of painful things, but that wasn't your fault, senpai. You say that, but I did them all with my own hands, Tono. No! The one who's at fault is Roa. There's no reason you have to die, senpai. But there's no reason for me to live, either. Saying that, senpai gives a mirthless laugh. I know. I know I don't have the right. I did so many horrible things. But why? She asked with a quivering voice. I don't deserve to be happy. That's why I never thought of it. That's why I never even dreamed of it. But, but why? Thud. Like a crying child, Senpai beats her hand against my chest. So why now do I see it? This sinful dream. She buries her face deep in my chest as she says this. It was so fun, even though I knew it was all a lie and I'm just playing out the life where I'm having fun. I thought it was fine the way it was. It was so much fun, I didn't want it to end even though I knew it was all a lie. An almost dreamlike happiness that I wanted to always last just one day longer. I see. What we wanted, what we wished for was the same after all. But that selfishness can't be allowed. I have to kill Roa quickly and receive my punishment. I have no right to live a normal life like you, Tono. Such a thing. I understand without you saying it. If if I'm wishing for such a dream and, can't, and I can't even kill you, I can't do anything but disappear. There's no longer a reason for me to stay here. Senpai speaks with an anguished voice. Farewell. I was really happy to hear you thank me. Senpai pulls back from me. The heartbeat I felt up until now cuts off. This person has told me farewell so many times. Even that time, with a smile, she said it as if it was very important to her. Farewell. I really did want to be a student like you and Inui. Really, why didn't I ever realize it? She would always say those simple things as if they were a distant dream for her. No, it's not a dream. I pull Senpai's body back towards me. Less out of love and more out of sorrow, I draw her close. Tono, that's enough. No. I won't be fooled by your lies anymore, Senpai. I hold her close as she tries to escape. If you want to continue, then go ahead and do so. What you're talking about is definitely not a dream. That, that's impossible. Why? After all, it really happened in reality. It's a way of life that if you wish for it, it'll come back. Please, don't call such simple things like that a dream. It's impossible. I've hurt you so much, Tono. It's too late to go back. That's okay. I don't mind, so you shouldn't either. See? I think I got to experience something as rare as truly being chased by the one I like. I try to sound as jokingly cheerful as I can. Senpai is silent. And tonight you looked really cool. Those clergy robes are good too, but your outfit tonight really suits you. I was lucky to see it. Senpai is silent. Senpai, you look different without your glasses. You were handsome and you looked older. As expected, Senpai is silent. No matter what I say, Senpai does not answer. I try as hard as I can to soften the mood, but fail miserably. I don't know what else I can say. Senpai, say something. Or don't you want to talk to me now? Senpai doesn't answer. She just pats her forehead on my chest. Softly, like a murmur. Idiot. That's what she ends up saying. Oh no, you're an idiot. I, I'm not the person you think I am, so how can you be so nice? Because I don't want you to cry. 
I want you to laugh. I want you to cheer up. But I don't have the right. I don't have the right to receive your kindness. A right to receive kindness. I didn't have such a thing earlier. But still, the one who laughed it off and told me that I didn't need such a thing was her. I don't know. I don't know your circumstance and honestly, I don't give a fuck. I'm not being kind to you for your sake, so don't worry about it. That time, after I killed Arukai, and when I could only think of killing myself. I can only think of killing myself, just like what you said to me that time. Um, well, I think I'm doing this because I want to be kind to you. The circumstances have nothing to do with this. It may be a bother to you, but just think of yourself as having been caught by a mean-spirited underclassman and give up. Harder. I hold her even more strongly than I hold her even more strongly to me, and our bodies press together. Oh no. I don't know about your sins. I like you. I love you, Senpai. That's why I'm being so kind to you. Everything else doesn't matter. I just want to be happy with you. I want to be happy with you forever, so I don't want you to die. But I... But still... Still, if you say you don't want to be happy, that's fine too. I'll just do what I want, and no matter how much you hate it, I'll be by your side and make you happy. So please, don't say farewell anymore. Stop saying that, saying that, and bring my hands to her face. Shaky. After she says this faintly, completely naturally, our two lips come together. Hmm. Our lips separate. She lets her arms fall to the side and pulls back from me. The hallway is silent. Seeing the blue moonlight faintly shading the world jolts me back to reality. <laughs> I just made a big fool of myself. Even though there's no way out, even for me, it's meaningless to embrace her. But I couldn't refrain from doing so. If I could, I wanted to stay like that forever. Tono. Is it okay to say that? Sorry, I wasn't thinking. I don't even know what to do with myself, and I was just saying haughty words. It's not what I'm saying. I'm asking if you really, I'm asking if you really can make a, like, fuck. That's not what I'm saying. I'm asking you if you really can make that sort of promise with me. The weakness she had in her voice has disappeared completely. Of course. I'm like this, but as long as there's a piece of me remaining, I'll always love you, senpai. Please, don't say such irresponsible things. If you're gonna make me happy, you have to stay as Tono. That's true, but it won't happen. I can't even trust if I'll be myself by the time tomorrow comes. Sorry, I am hopeless. Senpai, when I get to a point where I can't turn back at that time, I will not let you die. She declares. She strongly interrupts my words. I will not let you die. I won't let Roa have you. Senpai, but I will protect you. I will save you no matter what. So please, do not say that. Senpai quickly stands up and with a serious face tends to my wounds. It seems they already healed. It's nighttime, so your body is more like that of a vampire right now. Um, thanks to that, you were not killed. Maybe we should give Roa some thanks. Trying to lighten the mood or something, Senpai gives a joke that isn't exactly easy to reply to. Tono, can you stand by yourself? I can stand, but Senpai, is there really a way to save me? I can't say for sure, but if I go back to the Vatican, there might be a way. Um, unlike before, they had to sample me to do research on so they should have researched in how to seal Roa's soul while leaving the reincarnated human's consciousness. What's that? If it was such an easy way, then why? Tono. Certainly the church may be able to help you, but what awaits you may be hell. To the people of the church, you and I are both heretics. You will get the treat you will get the treatment in return for helping their research. Although if you stay quiet about your eyes, you may not be treated. Like a lab, you may not you may not be treated like a lab specimen like I was, but 
In other words, it'll really hurt. Yes. And if they still could not heal you, you would be treated as a vampire. I don't want you to experience those terrible things even worse than death. That's why I... It's okay, senpai. Right now we're at a dead end. If there's even a slightest chance, then we have to go wherever. And no matter how it turns out, I won't complain, senpai. No, I won't let anyone hurt you. Please trust me on that. Yeah, I trust you, senpai. I say that, but being a real small town person, I'm actually kind of worried about things like my passport and airfare. But what are you gonna do? Are we gonna go to the Vatican right now? No, I will treat you for the night. Roa is a vampire, so when it becomes morning, he'll calm down. It would be simple if it was just a matter of taking you to the Vatican, but your problem is something that should be kept low profile. Just like with me, there's something that shouldn't exist, so you may have to go so you have to go to the hidden part of the church. But to take you there, I have to get some permission. Even if we were even if we were to mentally pur purify you, there aren't any places in the city where we could do that. There's only one place where we can purify you in our way in this country. So I have to take you there first. Hmm. So are you saying we're going to the church tomorrow morning? No, it's not that simple. For an unbeliever like you to enter the Vatican, there are a long and frustrating approval process. So tomorrow, I'll go to the church in this country so that you'll be able to get a temporary permit. And that may take a number of days, so please wait in my room until then. I'll place a blockade against vampires in my room, so you should be able to last against Roa for a week or two there. Your room? You mean I'm staying in your room? Um, Tono, your life is in danger, so please put up with it. You can at least let your sister know, but please don't tell her the details. Well, it's not like I can tell her in the first place. Then shall we go? We have to separate the row inside you to start off. She grabs my arm and starts to walk. There really is no trace of her weakness before, but it is forced cheerfulness. Senpai really doesn't want me to be worried, so she's forcing herself. Thanks, Senpai. I speak in a low voice so she won't hear me. Here we are. It's a small place, but please make yourself at home. Ah, yeah. Sorry for intruding. Being aware that I'm entering a girl's place this late at night, I walk in. Shield's room hasn't changed one bit. Senpai, so what do I do now? Well, first, we will temporarily silence the row inside of you, Tano. Well, I said that, but my place itself is holy ground, so the advancements of Roa's consciousness will be greatly slowed just by staying here. Oh, then I'm safe as long as I stay here. Yeah, so if we were to just stop Roa's mind from invading yours, this room would be enough, but... Huh? Her cheeks flushing red. Shio hesitates as if she has something more. Senpai, what's wrong? Is there another problem? No, it's not what I would call a problem, but it can be dangerous to your life. Senpai, if it's dangerous to my life, wouldn't that be very, very important? Well, you're right, but um, if I say directly, Tono, is there any part of your body that feels strange? Feels strange? I mean, I do have inhuman strength right now. No, that's not what I mean, but don't you feel like this is really hot or I need to let it out or something like that? Uh, that, that is, well, the urge to destroy was certainly in me until recently. And I did that horrible thing to Kohaku. No, I'm fine. Since I entered this room, I haven't heard that guy's voice once. Just like you said, it seems like he'll calm down if I'm in this room, if, I, if I'm in here. But that is the mental side of your problem, not your body. She'll still hesitates like she has something to say rather difficult. I have no clue. This nigga's dense. Bro, she wants the shaky dick! I sit down on the floor to rest for now. Hey, you don't need to stand. Sit down. You must be tired after all that. Without answering me, she looks deep in thought. And then... Tono, please, take a shower. Huh? Because, like you said, all that's happened. So it's strange if you don't wash yourself and calm down. Well, but... No buts, Tono. 
Use my bath once anyway, so please don't hesitate. Shield pulls on my arm forcefully. Hey, hey, senpai, I said it isn't good. She won't listen to me. She drags me to the changing area and forces me to take a shower. Of course, by myself. Damn it. Sheila's waiting for me in her room. How did this happen? I resign myself to showering. As Sheila said, my body is filthy. There's mud all over my arms and neck and my body reeks of sweat. I see. I locked in myself in my room since yesterday. It was like I was horny all that time too. Horny. Um, that's odd. I'm still standing very erect right now too. Huh? I'm not really excited or anything, so how come? Why is my cock hard? Wait a minute, this is so, this is weird. It's full of blood, ignoring anything I tell it. Don't tell me. Since last night, urged by Roa's consciousness, since I attacked that woman in the street, I've always been like this. I feel terrified. That's bad. I'm supposed to be safe from Roa's will inside Shield's room, but it seems my body isn't calming down. Hey, staying erect for a long time, um, maybe isn't that, isn't a, that bad a thing? No, no, not maybe. Oh, wait, oh, staying erect for a long time, um, maybe, isn't that a bad thing? No, not maybe, but definitely. In the first place, being stiff for an hour hurts, so if I stay stiff for an entire day, that's just fucking wrong. I, I guess I have to. I speak aloud and get shocked. So I've been stiff all day. Since this can't be good, I'm gonna whack off in Shield's bathroom? I don't believe this shit. I can't do such an embarrassing thing. This is the bathroom. So if I did something, she wouldn't find out. But still, this is too, this, this is too miserable. But being erect for a whole day is seriously bad. I think it was calm after I attacked Kohaku. So it hasn't been a whole day, but still. Jeez. Even though I was almost killed by someone I liked until just now, why do I have trouble over such a stupid thing? Screaming out won't solve anything. I give up and decide to let it out. You just gonna blow one in her fucking shower. I mean, I get it. Like, I mean, I do the same shit. <laughs> I leave the bathroom. Oh, you're all clean now. You really did take a long time. Do you like taking baths, Tono? No, that's, that's not it, but... I hardly have the strength to answer. I did such a thing that made my dignity literally wash down the drain, but still. So how was it? Did you let it out yourself, Tono? Uh, senpai, you mean, uh... She sighs. I knew it. I knew it. If you, um, held it in so long, it might not be possible to release it unless it is... Roa's will. Shield starts to blush and my cheeks flush red as well. Hold it in. It's a little troubling if she says it that directly. Uh, uh, well, like Shield said, no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't get that fire out of me by myself. In the end, I gave up trying to let it out and left the bathroom. I'll come out honestly. This isn't a situation where embarrassment should stop me. As you say, senpai, my body is strange right now. I swear, but I'm not thinking any perverted things. Um, I'm not, but my body just by itself, like, is giving me hard cock. And I, I can't really say that I'd rot staying up like that. See, didn't I tell you to tell me if your body was strange anywhere? Then you were asking about this before. Yes. Tony, you may not have realized it yourself, but you're pretty excited. I was able to calm your mind, but we have to calm down the body too, or Ro will be able to take over. I see. Hey, tell me those kind of things clearly. I feel stupid not even realizing it until I was naked. If I could say it clearly, it wouldn't be difficult. Oh, that's right. Of course she can't say it clearly. She's a girl. Sorry, but what should I do? I tried something about it, but it just won't calm down. My dick is just rock solid. Does she have fucking scales? Not scales, what those shits? Are they scales? Gills? No, not even gills. Yeah, scales, scales. No, those are tattoos. Wings. It's like my body and mind are two completely separate things. My body feels like it's not mine and I can't even get in the mood for it. Jeez, to say it frankly, it's like I have no sensitivities whatsoever. 
it would be easy to say if I could just say it out loud like that. But I can't say that sort of thing to Senpai. I know. Tano, I brought you here to heal your body. Um, I knew it would be impossible just by yourself. Uh, I was the same way a long time ago, too. She speaks hesitantly. I see. She'll also have the experience of Roa taking over her body. So she knew this was going to happen to me. Senpai, do you know what I should do? Of course. Well, your mind right now is somewhat disconnected from your body. So more than yourself, um, someone else's skin, someone else helping you will make you feel better. Instantly. As soon as I hear her words, my mind goes blank. Someone else helping me. Um, senpai. That's what I mean. You may be unwilling to do it with me, Tono, but I don't give a fuck. Bear with it. It's a technique to calm the soul so it isn't sexual. So please, don't be so embarrassed. Ah. Uh, after she says it so directly, I don't know how to respond. And Tono, please, wait in the room. I also have some preparation to do. Wait. Senpai, are you going somewhere? Yes, I will also take a shower. I don't want to do it with all this paint on my arms. Even though she tells me not to be embarrassed, she also blushes. Senpai, this, um, we, 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 we really shouldn't. It's fine, so please, wait in my room. I'll prepare myself and go too. Senpai dashes off the change and slams the door. Huh. There's no time to stop her. Either way, I can't do anything unless I calm this thing down. I know it's taking advantage of her, but I'll just, I'll have to take her goodwill for now. I convince myself like that, and as I enter her room, Oh, Tono, um, do you object to me wearing glasses or anything? I hear her voice from the other side of the door. Glasses? Senpai, why are you asking that? Well, I know there are those kind of guys who care about that sort of thing. She sounds very embarrassed. Glasses, huh? Senpai really is concerned about the weirdest things. But a blushing face by the doorway is just too cute. Well, as for me, come on, gotta like the natural look. Senpai, if you say it's a bother, then please take them off. Is that so? Well, it doesn't really have a prescription, so it could be a bother, but are they all right? Thinking she's making a big deal, I decided to tell her directly. You don't have to worry about strange things. Um, if you're gonna go through so much trouble anyway, Senpai gives a quiet reaction. Yes, that's true. Then please, wait in the room. I hear a knob turn and the sound of spraying water in the shower. Flopping down on the bed, I look down at myself. My cock is extremely hard, in complete disregard to what I'm thinking. Senpai said it would be better to have someone else do it. She didn't say the method directly, but I can kind of see what it'll be based on how she was acting. Huh. The instant I think about it, my heart jumps. Damn it, what am I thinking? I try to calm down by shaking my head. She'll say it was just a method to suppress Roa, so it does not have any sexual meaning. Roa's consciousness is quiet now, so I can't be excited about myself. Calm down, calm down. I repeat it over and over like a mantra. While I do that, Shield comes out from the bathroom. Oh! Oh! She's so fine. She's so fine. My jaw drops down. Shield en enters the room in a shocking outfit, wearing only a shirt and panties. Zimpa! Why, why are you dressed like that? I wave my arms in surprise as Shiel gives an embarrassed smile. Um, is it that strange? I dressed like this to help you out. Help? With what? Um, I tried hard so I could help you be more turned on. Shiel gives a mumbled answer. I'm, I'm speechless. Being stared at in surprise, Shiel looks away uneasily. I'm sorry. I, I guess I should have known it's not sexy at all for me to be dressed like this. What are you saying? Of course you look sexy in that. Damn. Damn. I realized instantly. I realized I brought it out too much. Oh, well, um, I'm thankful for that, but that outfit is not good, senpai. At this rate, I'll go mad before Roa does. 
Tono. I look away from Shield. The contour of her shoulders under that white shirt. That shit is not white. That shirt is not white. Dumbass. The color of her concealing underwear. Her tender looking thighs. Looking at them directly causes me to go out of control. I know she's intending to get me turned on to refresh me, but still. Senpai, I think we should stop. I don't, I don't have that much confidence. Please, don't worry. I heard males are quite sensitive, so I think even I can refresh you. No, that's not what I meant by not having confidence. I don't, I don't think I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't think I could hold myself back. Then let's begin, Tono. What? What? Can you take off your pants? It's all right if you just unzip them and pull it out. She said, "Whip that shit out, nigga." Senpai is ready, and she doesn't seem that embarrassed about it. Senpai, aren't you embarrassed? Well, I am a little uneasy, but your body won't last much longer if we don't do anything. I'm just thinking it'll be like lancing a boil. A boil, that's a pretty direct expression. Oh, Tono, while I do this, please don't watch too much. I can't concentrate with people watching me. Bitch, you say that like you have experience. Bitch, do you have experience? You do this shit often? <laughs> Saying that, Shield draws closer. I get more confused inside as she stays calm. Wait, we should stop. This is wrong. Senpai still want to go all the way, but I don't want to do it for a reason like this. Tono, I have to leave you here tomorrow morning. This is the only time I have with you, right? If I don't do this right now, you'll be like this the whole time while I'm gone. That, that's right. Yes, it's okay, so please just sit there. I'm not experienced, but I'll try my best. Her cheeks coloring faintly, she looks directly at me. I see. Senpai's embarrassed too. She's prepared herself, so I can't just stay here and fret about it. I understand. Is this good? I draw my zipper and lower my underwear. Seeing my fully erect cock, shield suddenly freezes. Senpai, um, should we stop after all? N no, that's not it. I was just thinking that this really is you. Taking a deep breath, Shield walks towards me. Um, please, just look at the ceiling, Tona. Her body disappears from my view. Shield sits between me and spreads my sits between and spreads my legs. She faces my shaft so close that I can feel her breath on me. Her fingers touch me. With one hand, she takes her hesitating fingers and runs them down my length. Tono, how does it feel? Tell me when it feels good. I can't answer that. How can I put it? I feel kind of feel guilty. She touches me hesitantly, as if cradling something fragile. But just that. She's only touching me. My mind is going crazy. My mind is going crazy, but my shaft doesn't feel anything at all. You're a little harder than before. Saying this, she wraps her delicate fingers around me. It seems what she's doing doesn't feel good, as my tool hasn't even let out anything yet. As dry as I am, Senpai continues to try to calm me down. Awkward, unpleasant feeling continues for a few minutes. She fucking sucks! <laughs> this bitch is trash! <laughs> This trash ass hand job. Fuck out of here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Her fingers, originally light and hesitant, now grip me harder. Even though she was still simply moving up and down, she does so with a tighter grip. That's odd. Why isn't it doing anything, Tona? She sounds troubled. My mind is about to go crazy just from hearing her voice. Being struck by Senpai's finger does feel good, but it's far from making me blow everywhere but more than that right now the better shield's fingers feel the more i want to wrap my arms around her her voice becomes more full of heat it might be because she's embarrassed or trying that hard to caress me but her breath really does feel hotter <clears throat> oh no that's her i can hear her breathing become wilder then i realize she's now using both hands <sighs> 
<laughs> Stop. Stop. With both hands, she carefully embraces my fat cock. It's probably because of her diligent work, but I finally start to feel some fucking pleasure. <laughs> this bitch is trash. <laughs> A spark runs up my spine, but it isn't because of Shield's fingers. Just the fact that she's trying so hard is exciting me more than her touch. Her voice becomes quieter, then go! A pleasure different from the previous touching sensations makes me arch my back. Her voice becomes more labored now. She sounds as if she's having difficulty breathing. But the breath I feel is close and hot to me. Hot and close to me. And more than that, my dry rod is starting to get wet. Her breath grows even hotter. Hey, senpai! Unable to resist the temptation, I look down without thinking. Damn! Damn, she's drooling! She is drooling! She on that shit. My mind goes blank. That's what's causing the chills of pleasure. My heart and twitching shaft. The delicate fingers wrapped around it. The face close enough to breathe all over me. And the red tongue licking at me as if it has a mind of its own. Stop, nigga. With her eyes closed, she twirls her tongue enthusiastically around my crown. The feeling of her tongue is on a whole different level than her fingers. Damn, so she can't stroke shit, but she can suck shit. All right, she got that suck shit. Hold on. This is bad. If I see this kind of thing, my mind will get excited too. In reality, I'm already too excited. Swelling even further as if trying to escape her grasp. Hmm? Shield pulls back in surprise, but quickly wraps her fingers around me once more. She says, nigga, give me this shit. Run a fucking, don't fucking run away from me, you dirty dick. <laughs> I start to come alive even more. A thin, sticky line oozes from my tip, and she wipes it with her finger, then drenches my member with it. Her red tongue licks me once again. Oh no. Kun. <laughs> her words are broken by soft licks. From her lips, a line of saliva forms between me and her. Ah, this is bad. Really, seeing her like this is gonna drive me insane. Senpai, stop! If you keep doing this, I'll go crazy before I let it out! No, Tono. It doesn't matter. We have to keep going. Another sensation shoots through me. Her tongue has licked the back of my shaft. Let's stop! I won't be able to hold back like this. Please, don't hold back. If you release what's inside you, you can calm down. But I can't since it's you. It's okay, let's stop, Senpai. I know it's bad to say that after we've, you've gone this far, but I can't calm down with you doing this. Please, don't worry about me. I don't mind, really. Saying this, she continues caressing me with her tongue. Ah! I let out a small gasp. If she thinks this is only a chore, I guess I'll have to think of it that way too. I'm trying not to look at her, I do my best to focus on just letting it out. <clears throat> <clears throat> I can hear her small breaths. Her tongue feels like it's trying to taste all of me, and her captivating fingers torture me unrelentingly. The sound of my heartbeat and shields breathing echoes through the room. It's much pleasure. I'm being assailed by so much sensation, I would have normally come already, but my shaft is still not responding at all. It got wet for a while earlier, but now it's just back to being erect. <laughs> <laughs> she was really becoming even harder. <laughs> Maybe I felt like I was going to let it out back then because I saw Senpai's face, not because of the pleasure. <sighs> Senpai. She sounds so pained, I look down at her. Senpai's body is twitching. Maybe it's because she's been in the same spot for so long, or because it's hard to do it in that position, but she seems restless. Senpai, is this, is this too, position too difficult for you? It looks like you're uncomfortable. 
Huh? Why do you say that? Well, you're breathing pretty hard. If it's too hard for you, should we stop? No, I'm not out of breath because it's difficult, but... You're right, I'll move. Seems like you're not feeling anything either. She seems a little displeased. Hey. She doesn't seem to understand that I was feeling more than enough earlier. Then get up on the bed. You were kneeling on the floor for so long, I'll bet your knees hurt. Huh? Oh, yes. I'll do that. Please, look away. Huh? I don't quite get why, but I look away. Is he about to get pussy? Is he about to get pussy? Is he about to get pussy? Shield gets on the bed and tells me to look at the ceiling again. Senpai. I think it would be better if I could look at your face. Do I really, do I really have to look up at the ceiling? Uh, of course. You see me like this, I'll die. Die, how come? There's really nothing more than lancing a boil. Then it shouldn't matter if I look at you. Well, that's true, but her blush deepens and she tells me to just look up at the ceiling. On all fours, she'll reach us towards my groin. I still a glance at her as she does. Her body looks even hotter than before. I don't know why, exactly, but for one thing, the skin on her thigh is tinted red and reflecting the light. Huh? Reflecting, huh? Oh. My mind jolts as I realize what it is. Senpai, wait! Mmm, what is it, Tono? Just lie down. Huh? Yeah! <laughs> I push her down on the bed. Damn! Damn! Her face stiffens. Senpai, why are you wet down there? Uh... Shield's face turns red. Mmm, you said it was nothing, so why are you like that? You soaked through your panties, even dripping down your leg. No, 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 that's just... Shield blushes brighter than as she stammers. No? What is it then? I place my palm on her thigh. Hold on. This nigga getting freaky! Mm. Her whole body shakes. When I pull back, a sticky line forms between my hand and her thigh. No. Don't. Please. Don't look, Tono. She's so embarrassed. She's practically crying. This kind of reaction is so cute. It makes me want to tease her more. This is revenge for raping me in that dream. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, I won't look if you tell me not to. But at least tell me why you're like this before when you made me look away. Like this before you made me look away. Before you make me look away. I'll look at the ceiling if you tell me that much. Why? How can I say such a thing? You can't say it? Well, then I guess I just have to ask your body. <laughs> I put my hand on her thigh again, then following the slick trail of juices, I move my fingers up to the juncture between her thighs. <sighs> her hips instinctively pull back. Wow, you're really wet. It's pretty selfish of you to be feeling this damn good when I was worried that I couldn't come. I see. You were having fun by teasing me. N no, I, I really was trying to help you calm down, but you didn't react at all, so... So? I push with my index finger. I push through her well-soaked panties and into her slick folds. Uh -huh. <laughs> she cries out with embarrassment. That voice, seeing that face, hearing that voice, my heart starts pounding even faster. Come on, answer. Why is your body reacting this way, senpai? I started feeling hot while I was touching you and I thought it was strange myself, but my mind just blacked out and I, Use your, use your tongue and lick me like I was a lollipop. Her face turns so red, it's like she's on fire. But I didn't do anything myself. J just touching you made me hot and... You soaked right through your panties. You're more perverted than I thought, Shio. Tono! You're being mean. I told you, so please stop looking. Hearing her voice convinces me. Blushing so much and becoming so aroused just by touching me. No wonder everything beforehand didn't work. It has to be her. More than her fingertips or tongue. Just seeing her face makes me feel the most pleasure. Senpai, I have to have you. Damn. Tono? I finally figured it out. No matter what you do, if I can't see your face, it's no good. I won't feel it unless it's you. 
I probably won't be able to come unless I'm doing it with you, senpai. Um, I'm flattered, but it doesn't have anything to do with Roa. Even if he never exists, even if he never existed, I still want to fuck you. Being, being alone with you when you're so cute, I can't help but want to fuck you. Shio looks at me in surprise. Her shyness seems to fade away. Tono, are you serious? You think I joke about wanting to fuck you? But if you don't want me to fuck you, then I'll stop trying to fuck you. I don't want to do anything to hurt you. After a brief radiant smile, she suddenly looks downcast and averts her gaze. I want to do it with you too, Tono. But is it all right? I've always held back, but isn't it different for you? Even your body, it's just Roa's influence arousing- IDIOT! I'M THE ONE WHO'S HOLDING BACK THE urge TO FUCK YOU! All this time, I've been wanting to touch you and fuck you, senpai! Ugh. Before she can reply, I seal her lips with mine. Breathing wildly, we explore each other's lips. First tentative contact, then hungrily mixing together. <sighs> Seal's breathing. Her body is already burning with passion. So it seems like I won't have to do anything to prepare her. Tono. Senpai, I'm gonna undress you now. I peel her shirt and her panties from her. The pure beauty of her naked body underneath me is enough to cause my brain to melt down. Her skin glowing with sweat. Her tout, perfect little nipples. Her firm, sizable breasts, shuddering with every breath she takes. And below that, her pink slit is already soaking wet her swollen nub reflecting the light. What's this? Already this turned on, senpai? With the tip of my finger, I gently caress her bud. Oh! Being touched in the most sensitive part of her body, she jumps in response. I hope this shit isn't too damn long, bro. I don't know how long I can do this shit <laughs> before I gotta start yurking my shit myself. Like, nah, I'm fucking around. I don't know how long I can fucking deal with this shit, bro. This is killing my soul. <laughs> As I roll one finger around it, I slip a second into her. A wet sensation. She's soaking wet inside, too. She's like this. I wouldn't have any problems entering her at all right now. Senpai, I'm gonna put it in, all right? Uh, yes, but Tono... Speaking with a faltering, hesitating voice. She'll look directly into my eyes. Can you please stop calling me senpai? I want you to just call me Shield. As she asks this, her eyes are brimming with tears. Okay. Then I'm putting it in. Lift your legs a little, Seal. Shield. Okay. She raises her legs off the bed. Supporting them with my hands, I gently take my cock and ease it into senpai. Shield. No! Ah! The sound of flesh meeting flesh tortures my ears as I enter her. Stretching, pushing, it feels like I'm pressing myself between the two thick walls as I push into her. The feeling of it, of merging, is unbelievably good. Even with even just a small movement sends strong waves of pleasure racing through me. Inside, you're inside me. You dig in it. <laughs> You digging in me! You digging in a nigga! <laughs> I fucking can't do this shit! As I plump her depths, Sheil cries out. I pull back and push in once more. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, ah! Uh, uh. Her Sweet short sighs. I make only small movements as if matching her breathing. It feels like I'm hitting her with something heavy. No, uh, Tono, amazing. Maybe because my cock is more hard 
than usual. It seems like I'm squeezing into her rather than just entering. Feel is so tight. She squeezes me so hard it feels like she could tear me off if I try to pull out. <laughs> but I keep going. In rhythm with her wild breathing, I push into her over and over. This shit is fucking killing me. It's killing my soul. <laughs> she almost sounds like she's crying. Blushing furiously, she tries to resist a complete embarrassment and pleasure. <laughs> Shield's body oscillates. I put my hands on her shaking breast. I squeeze them as I fuck her hips. Her tightness feels so good. I caress her nipples with my fingers and slowly bring my tongue to bear on them. I don't know if that's good. A different reaction than before. She seems really sensitive there. I want to hear her voice spike like that again so I look harder. Uh, I don't know. Gentle. I can hardly hear her. My breathing reaches a feverish pitch. I just move. Shield's passage is hot. I feel like I'm melting inside her. My body is already on the edge. I could, expl I could explode right now. <sighs> but I keep thrusting into her. It's not the time to hold myself back. It's not, but if I can, I want to be connected like this with her forever. <laughs> she grips me even tighter. Shield's passionate voice, her nearly crying eyes. I don't want to let go. Still, just a little more. Yes, Tono, harder. I can hardly understand her. Just matching our heartbeats, I push into her with all my might, and then I finally reach all the way to her core. What? Does it hurt? She tightens all around me. I keep gripping my. Sh she keeps gripping my cock, the most sensitive part of my body. Shield's eyes are brimming with tears, but she doesn't seem like she's in pain. I only feel love for those eyes right now. Seal. I love you, Seal. I really don't understand. My mind is completely shut down. Those are the only words I can even understand. Yes, I, I love you too. Seal's voice strikes the very center of my brain, and it becomes the last straw. I'm coming! From my hips, from my very center, liquid passion starts to rumble forth. I hurriedly pull away from Shield's, Shield's body. A shock rises up from my testicles, and abruptly my semen bursts forth, coming out closer to jelly than fluid. <sighs> I breathe heavily, lying collapsed on the bed I suck in air. I'm spent. I feel exhausted as if I just ran a marathon, but more than my tiredness, I felt great pleasure from Shield's body. Just thinking back on it, it causes me to zone out. Oh, Shield. I lift myself up and look at her. Huh? That's a little surprising. I thought she would be savoring the feeling, but she looks incredibly full of energy. Shield, um, you're not tired? Huh? Um, are you tired? She seems surprised as she covers her mouth with her hand. I see. Shield, you didn't really move much. I guess I'm the only one who's tired. I sigh and fall back to the bed. But I had no problem releasing everything. Thank you, Shield. I'll sleep soundly now. Yes, that's true. She doesn't really sound too happy. She's like, nah, nigga. After that, it's my turn to get satisfied. What is it? Something wrong? Well, um... I was just thinking that you got dirty there. Oh, come to think of it, she's right. Jeez, I guess I don't have any sensitivity at all. Sorry, can I um use a tissue or something? Oh, I'll clean it up. Just lie down. R really, thanks. I don't know what she's thinking, but I lie down. She's about to lick that shit up. I take a deep breath. I let up calm down, I can sleep soundly. <laughs> I shake at the sudden burst of pleasure. Sheila's wiping me with a tissue. Ugh! It feels good. 
I really do enjoy the feeling of her fingers over the tissue. Slowly, she wipes me down. It was pretty thick, so it's probably a hard task. Harder than my dick. She's cleaning me carefully and diligently. Uh, men really are like wild beasts. Just being t uh, men really are like wild beasts. Just being touched by shield, I start to harden again. I can't, I can't. I tell myself to calm down and then a chill runs up my spine. My deflated member gets larger, not just from her fingers, but the sensation of her tongue causes it to rise once more. She know what she doing. She doing this shit on, she wasn't satisfied. She wanted more dick. Hey, senpai. I look up without thinking. There, the sight of what Sheila is doing makes me stare in amazement. Using her tongue, she laughs at the semen still clinging to me. Ah! The sensation, the feeling of her tongue running over me and the fact that she's licking my cum off of me. Just from that, I fully hardened once more. Ah, uh, hey, she, ew. And gross and caressing me, Sheila doesn't hear a word I say. The earnest movements of her tongue, her fingers stroke me up and down and I start to leak pre-cum already. Man, I just came already. I'm a little bothered by how simply I got aroused. Like, can it be helped? Would any guy be able to resist those kind, passionate caresses? But more than that, why is Shield going so far to make me happy? Oh, and it hits me. Maybe, but, maybe, but she must be Shield. Don't tell me you didn't get to come. She pulls back from me and blushing furiously gives a nod. Then you got me up again so that, um, she, she wants another round, I guess. Sheila, you couldn't come? No, I, um, I want to be with you again, Tono. Looking down, she blushes to the tip of her ears. It hits me pretty hard. Having heard that, no, having made her say that, I'm a little embarrassed. Trash ass dick. <laughs> Nigga, dick gang trash. <laughs> you're, you're right. And this isn't enough for me either. We won't be able to see each other after tomorrow, so I should be with you as much as I can. If we do this until I collapse, my body would probably be calm for a long time. That may be true, but oh no, you sound rough. What? Weren't you the one looking for more? We can stop if you don't want to do it. No, uh, uh sorry. Embarrassed, she apologizes with all her might. Sorry, I was kidding. Being all energetic like this, I want you too. But I really am tired, so can you be on top? Uh, on, on top of you? Yeah. I can't really move a lot, so it's your turn this time. It's what they usually call is cowgirl. Um, like this? Her hands and knees like a cat. She walks over and positions herself over me. Wow, what a great view. From this angle, I can see every bit of Shield's glorious breasts. Dang! That is an angle! <laughs> Looking away, Shield lowers herself onto me. A wet sensation. Without any resistance, she takes me in. Oh, it's in. Yeah, it's in. It was, it, it was in before, right? As I, soon as I say that, she blushes even more. I can't tell if she's easily embarrassed or really outgoing. Can you move? You can start slowly if you want, and when you get used to it, you can go faster. Uh, okay. She starts to rock hesitantly up and down. A slow, gentle tempo. Is that enough to please her? She's already breathing heavily. Mm, oh, ah, oh. She slowly starts to make bigger movements. She leaks her warm juices all over me. Our groins are soaked with sticky fluids. Mm -hmm. ah, ah, ah. The sound of flesh meeting flesh meeting fluid. Probably because I'm not moving this time. Nothing but pure pleasure flows into my brain. But just to stay like that is boring, so I decide to move too. Shield's hips rise and fall. Matching her timing, I raise my hips. Yeah! The sensation of her weight bearing down on me. It feels like I'm thrusting all the way into his stomach. Ah! Uh, oh! She moans loudly, but she doesn't stop sliding up and down. 
and I continue to match her rhythm. Oh, so good, Tono. Wonderful. <laughs> her back arches a pleasure. She's so wild. It looks like she might fold herself in half. <laughs> Seeing her getting so worked up causes my breathing to become wilder as well. Thrusting in this position is more tiring, though. My arms aren't doing anything. I place one on her leg and another on her hip. It feels so good. Shield's body rocks as if she's longing for more pleasure. Her well-developed breasts and her black hair. Her hair is blue. Her hair is not black. And her blue hair sway in time with the movement of her hips. Feeling her hot breath on me, I move the hand on her hip around, around to her backside. Gently, I grab her soft yet firm cheek. Ah! Her expression changes. It's a slightly different reaction than before. With one palm still on her hip, I bring my finger down to her ass. Between those ample mounds, my finger slips to the soft, soft flesh and buries itself deep between her cheeks, lightly covering her other opening. Yeah! Her back arches again as she stifles a cry and tightens around my cock even more than <laughs> Sheila, are you that sensitive? Oh, well, when you touch it, I feel a bit weird. Oh, it feels weird, Sheila. I slip my finger inside, just a bit, just halfway past the fingernail. Ah! But she responds more to this than any of the other caresses. Tono, oh, please stop that. She's breathing so heavily I can hardly understand her. Her cheeks aren't red just because she's hot, but she must really be embarrassed to have that done to her. I feel excited too. Unthinkingly, I just want to tease her. I see you like it there, huh? You should have told me earlier. Huh, Tono? Let's switch up. I'll move this time. I pull away from her and stand up. Chill, put your hands and knees on the bed. Um, like this? She gets down on all fours. Her juices drip almost non-stop. She's leaking all the way down to her ankles. You really are bottomless, Sheila. You were soaking before, but it's still dripping now. Starting at her ankle, I lap the juices off of her body. Uh, Shiki, please don't do that. Why? You did it for me, Sheila. This is just payback. <laughs> From her ankle to her knee, Behind her knee, tracing the helix with my tongue, all the way up to her thigh, and then from her thigh to the pink wellspring between her legs. Her hips pull back. Chasing her, I bring my mouth right between her thighs. I push my tongue in. Unhesitatingly, I move my tongue around inside her warm, moist hole and drink the juices that seep forth. No, that, that's dirty. Shield's voice quivers. Her voice is mixed with embarrassment and pleasure, and it looks like she doesn't even know what she's saying. It's not dirty at all. This is what made both of us feel so good. Were you faking it? Stopping my kiss, I bring my finger up to her slit. Ah, uh, it feels good. I see. But I think you will really feel much better here than there, Sheila. Up between her legs, using the one hand drenched in her juice as I spread her cheeks. With her own fluids, I completely coat the area around her anus. Mm. Tono, don't tell me you're... That's right. I heard it's better not to grit your teeth, though. It hurts less if you breathe through your mouth. Hey, Tono, you idiot! Don't... Don't touch there! Ah! Holding on... <laughs> Holding on to her as I try to escape, I bury my face between her chin. This nigga eat ass! He eat ass! Wow! Holding her tight, I lick her twitching ass. This nigga is eating ass! He's eating that ass like groceries! You gotta eat the booty like grocery. Hold on. Barely teasing the outer surface. My kisses, you just tried to escape. You really like this, don't you, Shield? No, Tono, please don't lick me there. Hearing that only makes me want to do it more. I only licked the outside first, but this time I put my tongue in. Damn! 
Working diligently, I soak her ass with just her own juice in my saliva. Mm. <laughs> Having her react so strongly to the tip of my tongue, I'm almost afraid to see what might happen next. But I've gone this far, I can't stop now. More than that, I want to see what it'll feel like. Well, I guess it's about time. I bring my fat cock right to her opening. Shield's body twitches. Holding her firmly, I slide it inside her. Damn! It feels completely different. She tightens all around me. Her much smaller opening resisting my advance. I gradually push in deeper, forcing my way through. Ah. She'll practically screams. It's only natural. This hole wasn't designed to receive a man. Pain and another sensation are probably mixing inside her. <laughs> but it's also tight here. I slowly push myself in as she tightens around me, as if resisting the foreign object sliding into her. The pressure around me is enormous. I fight to spread the walls that shouldn't be opened. It's the same for me. I'm feeling more pain than pleasure. Uh, 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 uh. Her frantically rising voice. Tight. Not giving in, I push harder. But maybe because I lubricated her with my saliva and her juices before, once the tip is in, it becomes easier than I thought to stick the rest of it in. God, no! Something that big won't fit! Sweat beats on her forehead. It has to because I'm forcing myself into such a small hole. She has to feel it twice as much. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. She tightens even more. Tight doesn't even begin to describe it. The pressure increases around me a thousandfold, as if to punish me for entering her this way. I'm out of breath. It hurts. It hurts, but this strangulation is pleasure too. Amazing, this is the first time. Your ass is so good, Shield. It feels like it won't go in again if I pull it out too far. So I'll withdraw slightly and push back in. Only a bit, pull, thrust. And it gets me in deeper. So I'll pull back just a little and then push back in. I repeat the cycle over and over. <laughs> My voice slips out as I thrust. Uh, don't know. Uh. Sheila is the same way. As the pleasure starts to win over the pain, she starts to accept me. Mm -hmm. uh. Just a bit. Ah, uh, it feels good, Tono. Just a bit. Ah, uh, more, Tono. Just a bit. Ah, uh, Tono, Tono, deeper. Me too. Deeper, deeper. I've reached my limit. Sheila, I... No, no, I won't let you finish already. Ugh! My withdrawal is halted. She tightens around me like an iron clamp. I can't get out. I can't move even a little bit. I'm on the verge of release, but she won't let me. Why you? I thrust once more. My dick penetrates deeper. Uh! Sheila's arms collapse as if she has no strength left. She lifts her hips and she collapses on the bed. Even still, I don't stop moving. Tono, you're in so deep. She'll grip the sheets as if resisting the pleasure. <laughs> I also try to resist the heat welling inside me. Holding back, I thrust deeper. I've already put myself all the way to the base. I feel like I'm almost in her stomach. Uh, uh, Once. I, I can't take it anymore. Twice. Uh, no, no. Three times, Shield's body tightens. This really is the end. I'm there too. I have to pull myself out of her. Tono, inside, do it inside. Her voice is pleading. Instead of pulling back, I thrust deeper inside her. She arches her back. Her hands frantically grip the sheets. Her limbs tense fiercely. Shield's body tightens around me as if it never plans to let go. I just wanted all of her. I'm coming! Yes, come, please come! I thrust harder than ever before. Thump. The feeling assails me. The feeling of shooting out hot magma cum inside of her. I, I. Splurt, splurt. 
splurt over and over. It doesn't stop with just a few times. I just keep shooting into her. Uh -huh. Shield's body begins to buckle. As she grips the sheets, a line of tears forms around her eyes. Shield collapses onto the bed. Even though she's collapsed, the tightness of her ass doesn't fade. I manage to make my tool out with a large, heavy popping sound. Take my tool out with a large, heavy popping sound. As soon as I threw, as soon as I do, a large amount of my cum flows out of her. Shiki. She gasps my name. Like how I called Senpai Shio. In the end, she called me by my first name. Ah. <sighs> Finally, her tightness eases. I pull back. A sticky line connects us. At the same time, cum is oozing out of her ass. How do I say this? Well, even though this is the first time I had sex with her, I realize I may have done too much. Sheil, are you okay? My ass, it hurts. I see. Uh, I I'm sorry. You were just too cute. I wanted to tease you. No, I won't be fooled by that. Lying down, she glares up at me. What, what, do you, what do you mean? You, you liked it too in the end. I, I wasn't paying too, you know? Shield, you're always swinging that heavy weapon around, but did you train your ass muscles too? Uh, what, what are you saying, Tono? Shield gets up and beats the shit out of me. Ouch! So violent. I lift my hands up in protest. Shield lets out a sigh. Jeez, you won't even let me savor the moment. We won't be able to see each other after tomorrow morning, so can't you treasure the mood just a little more? That's true, but we were pretty wild. Shall we take a shower and change the sheets? She'll react like she just found that out now. Th that's right. Then I'll go take a shower. Sh sh that's right. Then I'll go take a shower. She'll run to the bathroom. <laughs> I start to laugh. I'm carrying a bomb called Roa, but I don't even feel worried about that now. The person who I thought I lost so many times is here with me now. As long as she's here, there's nothing to be worried about. I embraced her at school, but that was more out of sadness and love. But this is different. This is only love. I love her so much, I almost wanted her to stay here. In the end, the two of us ended up in bed, staring up at the ceiling without sleeping. If I said something, I'm sure I would not let her go. So without speaking, I just felt her breathing and her warmth next to mine. When morning came, she left the bed. I'm going. I'll be back as soon as I can, so please don't leave the room, okay? It seems she's bought enough food to last two weeks. I'll leave the fact that most of it seems to be curry. I'll leave, I'll leave aside the fact that most of it seems to be curry. Please don't run off with some floozy while I'm gone. I get really jealous. She says a scary thing with a deep smile and exits the room. It's before five o'clock in the morning. This is how the last Monday in October began. That's the end of the episode, guys. Y'all enjoy it. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, and read them all. Tap into the next one. I'm going to be real. Anything I had to say about what happened during this chapter, all of that just got fucking wiped by that <laughs> fuck session. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm so glad I'm playing the original. Uh, I, I love these H scenes, bro. They're so fucking funny. They actually just kill me. All they wanted, all they do is make me just want to laugh my ass off, bro. I love them so much, but man, this chapter was crazy. Actually insane. My theory turned out to be true. If y'all don't know, if you're new to my channel, more or less, or if you know, your Tsukihime or Fate is what your, is basically your introduction to me, then I might not have said it in these videos, right? But I have a bro named Sunny. And if you want to see some of him, you can go and watch my Quartz Party Book of Shadow playthrough. Because we both like Quartz Party a lot, so we, um, we, we played that game together and we voice acted it. We, we, you know, we had fun voice acting together, right? That's what that game was. And we're going to be doing the same for Birthday Bash. But after, I, 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 every, after every episode, I, like, I call him and I just talk to him about like, my theories and stuff and I tell him what's going on. He doesn't know shit about it. Apparently, he just likes hearing me explain the plot. So that's why he sticks around. 
But I, and I also like to just yeah, y'all already know that already. But I just like I like to talk to him. And yesterday we were talking about the Roa situation in the last chapter, not the last chapter, but the chapter before last. And we were both really confused about what was going on, right? So I made that theory. I made uh, I, I proposed that theory that Roa was inside of Shiki. Like at first I thought like the um we call we call Shiki all capital we call him OG to make it simpler right. So I proposed that OG basically like when he died when the grandfather killed him before he died he lost his will to live and that gave Roa the opening to fully take over the body and become a vampire. But just but he also decided to choose Shiki as his next vessel should OG's vessel die. So when Arukai killed OG or Roa in OG's body, all that did was just transfer his soul fully to Shiki and cause all of that what was going on. That was my theory. And this is, you know, these chapters is making the theory more and more plausible. I don't know that's exactly how it happened. Like I am going off memory and my memory is ass, but I think, but that's my theory right now. But peace out. I love y'all. Tap into the next one. I'm glad y'all with me. I think next episode is going to be the finale of this route. Uh, peace out. Gotta eat the booty like groceries, but you gotta eat the booty like.